This conference will now be recorded. Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs and welcome back to Python 3 series. Uh, today I'm going to cover uh, one more topic on object oriented programming point of view in Python that what do you mean by data hiding? And if you know that uh, we have data hiding uh, with the help of encapsulation and with the help of private keyword in Java, but uh, we don't have as such any private variable or if you really want to define any hidden variable of a particular class then how to do that today we will learn about it and second thing is that if you remember that uh, uh, we have seen dot to string method for the object conversion into a string right the string representation of the object but same thing what is the equivalent methods are available okay in python we will see that so it's very important or object oriented programming point of view. In the previous session, we have seen that how to create a class, how to create a method constructor, how to create the object of that particular class. What do you mean by class variable? What do you mean by instance variable, right? That was your object oriented programming one part. Now this is the second part. So let's start without wasting our time. So let me create a Python file and let's see first file I'm creating data hiding. Okay, how will you hide the data? To hide the data, you remember in Java, we have private variables. It means out of outside of the class, I cannot access those private variables and the methods. But here, if you really don't want to declare any private uh, variable, then you need to use double underscore in Python, right? So how to do that? So let's see my class name is, I have a class, um, let's see employee class. Right. In this particular employee class, what I want, I want to define one hidden member or hidden data member of employee class. So how will you do that? Do that. To do this thing, guys, let's see underscore underscore you have to write and then you have to give the variable name. So let's see my variable name is salary. Right. And salary I'm giving let's see 1000 so this is called your private variable right so this is called your private variable now to access this private variable what you need to do so if you really want to access this particular private variable what you need to do you need to create the object of this particular class so let me create the object of this particular class so I'll come out of the out of this particular class because the class scope is starting here and ending over, over here and then i'll come out of the class and then i'll try to create the object so let's see my object name is e1 is equal to i'm just creating the object employee like this and then guys if you try to access even dot okay if you try to let's say i want to print the value of even dot underscore underscore and whatever the value is there salary what do you think what should be the output so if you run it okay you will get an error that employee object has no attribute underscore salary right because this is a hidden data but so it says that okay hey hidden data you cannot hidden data means a private variable you cannot access it so this is i would say hidden data member or i would say the private member of the class with underscore underscore so how to access that so this is not the right way of accessing otherwise it will give you error that okay uh, because in this particular program we try to access hidden variable outside of the class using the object and it is throwing some exception or some error that attribute error or something like this right so what, what is the right way of doing it so we can access value of hidden attribute by some tricky syntax okay so this is not the right way of doing it so guys don't use it let me comment it out so this is not the right way i would say this is not the right way of accessing hidden private variable okay so how to do that to do this thing guys what you need to do you just simple write print even right dot 
and then you have to write your class name. So what is my class name? Employee. But before that, you need to write one underscore, single underscore, and then simple write employee. Okay, and then underscore underscore. What is your hidden element? Hidden variable. Okay, my hidden variable is this salary. And then you try. And then you run it, and then you will see I'm getting thousand. Got it. So this is called we can access the private variable or hidden uh, variable of a particular class, but this is the syntax. This is what you have to use. This is called access, or I would say, sorry, access private hidden variable by using tricky syntax. Okay, in Java, in, in Python, we say tricky syntax. So this is the tricky syntax. I'll repeat even dot, you need to write single underscore for your class name and double underscore for your private variable name. Got it? Like this. Very simple. Okay. So private methods are accessible outside their class. Just, but it is accessible, but not that easily accessible. You have to write the tricky syntax for that. But in Python, there is nothing like truly private that actually you are using the concept of uh, a private keyword in outside of the class. It cannot be used in in Python. Everything is allowed. It's not like Java, right? So internally, the name of the private and attributes are OK, can be accessed outside of the class with the tricky syntax like this. It's OK. So there are no certain rules available in Python. That's why Python is very simple not that complex as compared to java got it so this is one of the concept i really wanted to cover and this concept is called what data hiding okay perfect now let's create one more class for the next topic i'm going to cover that how will you print objects remember how will you print the objects or the string representation of the object and right dot to string method right so in c plus plus we need to use uh, outstream operator right or less than less than equal to or less than less than operator we have to use in java we have to use dot to string method but in python we have two methods so today what we are going to cover that uh, the string representation of class object Right. So in Java, we used to do two string method, but here what you need to do. So let's say I'm going to create a class and let's see my class name is test class. Right. And uh, in this particular test class, I'll create one constructor. So I've already told you that we have to use underscore underscore in it. Right. And I'm passing, let's see, two variables over here, comma x, comma y. And I'm simple writing self dot x that we have already covered is equal to x and uh, self dot y is equal to y fine okay now what you need to do guys to printing the objects it will give you some information about the object the string representation of the object right in java we have two string method available in object class but in python what you need to do you need to use two important methods the first important method is that is a already defined method already system defined method representation repr the representation method we have to use right and then let's see i'm simple writing return uh, return a colon i just simple print it like this a colon uh, percentage s and b colon percentage s right and uh, and then right percentage and in bracket i'll write simple self dot a comma self dot b right so this is a, a representation method i have to use and i'm just printing i'm just returning the value of self dot a and self dot b like this so it will be like a whatever the value i'll pass and then b the whatever the value i'll be passing over there right and then the second method guys you have to use def underscore underscore str 
This is just like two string method. We have to use str. And then I'll simple write, let's see, return. And uh, I'll simple write in bracket the value of a is okay, percentage s and b is next percentage s percentage bracket self dot okay self dot x okay, so we have to write x not a that is my mistake right so and self dot y and uh, here comma self dot y right because we are using and the constructor we are using x and y we have to use the same okay variable over here so self dot x and self dot y now i'll come out of the class let's see or maybe within the same class what i'll do this is my test code i'm going to test this particular code test code or your driver code i'm going to create the object of this particular class so how to create simple t is equal to test and i have to pass because the moment i create the object constructor will be called but here i have to pass two values inside this constructor so let's say i'm passing 10 comma 20. okay 10 comma 20. fine and uh, simple i'll do one thing i'll just print the value of t now see the output the moment i print the value of t t means the object reference i'm printing it directly and you see and you observe the output okay, just a minute 10 comma 20 and uh, self dot x is equal to x that we have written that is fine and i'm printing t what exactly is saying line number 17 okay this is the right code t is equal to class name is equal to this test takes no arguments no, no. one second guys Okay, let me create the object once again. <clears throat> T is equal to okay test and uh, and I'll do one thing. Simple. Let's see the print the value of T and let's see what happens. Right in. Okay, so it's saying that we are expecting okay some values to over here. Cell dot x and cell dot y. So object has no attribute x so i'll do one thing i'll pass one comma two like this and uh, let's run it again okay so it's saying that it takes no argument one second let me quickly check one comma two which is absolutely fine one will be given to this y will be given to this so this is absolutely fine this is my class one second this conference will now be recorded. Okay, guys. So if you are getting this error, we did just a silly mistake. It should be in it. I have written int. So that is my bad. Okay, so we have to use in it. And now if you are passing, let's see 10 comma 20, and then simply you run it. You are getting the value of x is 10 and the y is this. So what will happen, guys? The moment you print the value of t immediately this str method will be called internally by default so remember this thing this is the string method that str method will be called over here like this got it now now if you see one more thing that if there is no str method so let's see i'm just gonna comment this particular str method okay if there is no str method then what will happen we have only one representation method right so if you run it now it will take this particular method if there is no str method then it will call the representation method remember this thing if there is no str method is defined in your particular class then it will use representation method right and if there is no representation method also <clears throat> let's see <clears throat> i'm going to comment this uh, representation method as well it means representation as well as str method both are okay commented both are not available only one class and the constructor is available then what will happen and then if you run it you will get something like this main test object at this particular location this is the object address inside the memory got it so this is okay 
if you directly print the value of t, it will print it like this without representation and str method. So whenever you want to okay, print the value of object reference, guys, you have to use these two methods, either of them. Either you use str or representation. If you are using both, str will be considered like this, right? So this is about right getting the string representation of the class object. Got it? So whenever you have to print any object, I would say this is more about object printing. Whenever you have to print the object. So this is called object printing concept. Right, object printing concept. It's very simple guys, print the object. If you directly print the object, it will give you like this. Some random, I mean, some memory allocation number. Right, but if you really want to print the internal representation of the particular object, what are the different variables and everything's available, you have to write it like this with the return keyword over there. Got it. So that's all for about this particular session. In the next session, I'll tell you something more interesting about uh, the objects and everything and more complex thing okay, in Python. So thanks for watching this video, guys, and keep watching Naveen Automation Labs. And please start this Python series from the beginning if you haven't started. This is very, very important to know, very, very important to learn Python. It will really help you to learn about your machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence, plus Selenium also we will be using uh, Python. So it will be an extra advantage, an extra added flavor in your resume. It will be great learning for you guys as well. Okay, so thanks for watching this video. Keep learning and keep watching Naveen Automation Labs.